Klaus Schwab brought a virtual greeting to the World Government Summit 2022. Schwab's short speech contained a clear message that now is the time to start implementing one world government. This means that the world will soon enter an era of one world government, one world economy, and one ecumenical world religion. The prophecies of the Bible, the word of God, will soon be fulfilled, for the time is coming when no one will be allowed to buy and sell, unless he first worships the beast, and the Antichrist, the age of the mark of the beast, is coming soon. But the word of the Bible declares that no one will inadvertently take the mark of the beast, because a person must first worship the beast and the Antichrist, and then he will take the mark of the beast, which will be placed on his forehead, or on his right hand. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, that his coming will take place, after the great tribulation, the holiness, love and truth of God, are far greater than the persecution, and hatred brought about, by the wickedness of the Antichrist. Every disciple of the Lord Jesus, who loves Jesus in truth, is safe so that his soul will not be defiled, and will not give in to the wickedness of the Antichrist. Next, we will look at Klaus Schwab's short speech, from the World Government Summit 2022, and after that I will analyze the speech and bring up other points on this subject. Your Excellencies, Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to participate for the eighth time at this important meeting, even if only in a virtual way. I would like to express my high respect to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum for having taken the initiative for creating such an important global platform for governments shaping the future. I also want to congratulate Dubai for having organized such a successful World Expo despite all the repercussions of the global pandemic. Last November, in partnership with His Excellency Mohammed Al Gargawi, we brought together 60 top intellectual thinkers here in Dubai. Thank you to His Excellency for enabling this initiative to define a longer-term narrative to make the world more resilient, more inclusive and more sustainable. With all the current issues on our agenda, we tend to forget that we are in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution, which accelerates global change in much more comprehensive and faster ways than the previous three revolutions. I'm proud that the government of Dubai has been so foresighted in establishing a center for the fourth industrial revolution in cooperation with the World Economic Forum. The objective is to quickly recognize the potential of new technologies as well as develop the necessary ethical and political frameworks around those new technologies to ensure that those technologies are human-centered and society-oriented. The world has to overcome not only the damage done to our economies and our societies by COVID-19, it also has to confront the repercussions of a dangerous clash between major global powers. History is truly at a turning point. We do not yet know the full extent and the systemic and structural changes which will happen. However, we do know that global energy systems, food systems and supply chains will be deeply affected. In times of crisis, the role of governments is more important and more relevant than ever. What is also needed is a summit like this one to go beyond crisis management and to look into constructive ways 
we can build our common future. Our futures are intrinsically connected to one another as the profound challenges to mankind, such as climate change, are globally interconnected and require collaborative responses. In conclusion, and despite all the challenges, we have to uphold our responsibility, which we have towards the next generation, and which we can only fulfill through collaboration on a national and on a global level. I wish you an impactful and successful meeting. Klaus Schwab said that now is the time to work together nationally and globally. If and when you look at this world and the things that affect it from a deeper level than what the mainstream media tells people, then you will be able to understand that there is a so-called power elite that wants to impose a new world order on the earth. This new world order is the same thing as Schwab's fourth industrial revolution. The Bible says that in the last days before the second coming of the Lord Jesus there will be a fourth beast on earth, which is the fourth kingdom that will be born on earth, different from all the other kingdoms. It will devour all the earth and tread it down and crush it. This is no coincidence, for this is the fourth global kingdom on earth, which will connect the nations together. Through the plans and powers of evil, Klaus Schwab has said how these current crises are creating and enabling the Great Reset, which could enable a fourth industrial empire, a new world order, in which man is connected to technology. And this fourth industrial revolution is different from the others, and that it does not change what a man does, but it changes a man. Schwab has said how genetic modification changes the human being because it has a big impact on human identity. Yuval Harari Transhumanism and Chief Advisor to Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum has said that the time of free will is over, by which he meant that in the coming new world order, man will no longer have free will. Man will lose his free will when he starts to worship the beast and the antichrist, after which he will receive the mark of the beast. Receiving the mark of the beast takes away man's free will, because the mark of the beast connects man to a system that is dominated and controlled by the beast and the antichrist. In truth, a believer who loves the Lord Jesus is allowed to keep his free will and is free to serve the living God, because he does not take the mark of the beast. Next we will look at what Klaus Schwab says about the Great Reset Agenda, which I will comment on after Schwab's speech. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. It has laid bare the fundamental lack of social cohesion, fairness, inclusion, and equality. In short, we need a great reset. We have a choice to remain passive, which would lead to, an, to the amplification of many of the trends we see today. Polarization, nationalism, racism, and ultimately increased social unrest and conflicts. But we have another choice. We can build a new social contract, particularly integrating the next generation. We can change our behavior to be in harmony with nature again. And we can make sure that the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are best utilized to provide us with better lives. It is obvious that we are in the midst of the most severe crisis the world has experienced since World War II. 
75 years ago, countries and people came together to shape the post-war global order, which brought us decades of peace, increased global cooperation and prosperity to hundreds of millions of people around the world. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system for the need for the post-corona era. We have to mobilize all constituents of our global society to work together. We must not miss this unique window of opportunity. What the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. The world power elite knows that nations will not accept a new world order unless the present system turns out so bad that we need a new and better world order. This is the agenda and the plan of the power elite to create crises, global pandemics and to create wars, to bring down the world economy and to bring misery and destruction to the earth because then the nations will accept the new world order which they say is better than the old one. However, the new world order is a deception that leads to the system of evil of the Antichrist. Klaus Schwab has said how, through the fourth industrial revolution, the physical and biological identity of man will be merged into a digital identity, which will eventually lead to taking of the mark of the beast with which those who worship the Antichrist will be marked. Such a believer who loves Jesus in truth, his soul will be in the good safety and protection of God, and will not fear and be anxious about what the world will bring, because he will await the second coming of Jesus and will rejoice in his heart in the goodness of God's grace and salvation through the blood and atoning work of the Lord Jesus. The New World Order wants to change everything into something different from the Old World Order. The New World Order wants to change a man's natural sexuality, wants to destroy nation-states, wants to change all the old values into new values, and these new values, according to the truth of the Bible are sin. The New World Order wants to impose new legislation all over the world, and this new legislation consists of things that support sin. Every person and every nation that opposes this new world system will be declared evil and must be fought against. If you look at what is happening now in this world, in 2022 when we are now in April, you will see how the architects of the New World Order are manipulating nations to consider everyone and everything that opposes the New World Order as evil. The architects of the New World Order will spread their propaganda through the mainstream media all over the world. This is why most people in the world do not understand why and what is happening in the world today. The pandemic and war is a creation of the power elite designed to cause destruction and suffering in humanity so that humanity will accept the new world order. I strongly condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but not many people see and understand how the West and NATO, which are influenced by the new world order through the expansion of NATO, have brought about the war between Russia and Ukraine.
This is not, of course, a defense of the terrible suffering caused by Russia to the Ukrainian people. Outi Korhonen, onko esimerkiksi Natolla laillinen oikeus pysäyttää Venäjän joukot? Ei, ilman YK on mandaattia eli valtuutusta, että meillähän on turvallisuusjärjestelmä maailmassa, joka perustuu siihen, että vain yhdellä taholla, eli YKlla, on oikeus lähteä tällaisen voiman käyttöön puuttumaan toisen, toisten valtioiden asioihin. Ja tässähän on nyt ylitetty kuitenkin aseellisen voimankäytön kynnys näiden puolisotilaallisten avustustoimien kohdalla. Eli, näitäkään, Eli ei, niin, mm. näitäkään ei saisi tehdä, että lähettää sinne ikään kuin näitä avustajia ja strategeja ja neuvonantajia ja, ja tosiaan varusteita ja muita tällaista, että tämäkin on niin kuin laillisesti kyseenalaista. Sotilasavun myötä on astuttu tietyn rajan yli ilman YK-valtuutusta ja, ja se syy, minkä takia tähän niin kuin tarvittaisiin tämmöinen todella kaikkien YK-jäsenten välinen yhteinen päätös on se, että täytyisi niin kuin harkita se, että, että pidentääkö tämä mahdollisesti konfliktia, eskaloiko se sitä vai päästäänkö tällä siihen, mikä on kansainvälisen oikeuden ja politiikankin päämäärä, että, että tota yksikään Henkilö hmm. ei enää joudu kärsimään tai, tai kuole turhaan, jos se voidaan hmm. välttää. Under international law, the UN has the right to decide what aid should be given to countries at war. According to the UN, armed aid must not be given to countries at war because it prolongs the war and thus exacerbates the suffering of the people. The more Ukraine is assisted with weapons, the harder Russia strikes and destroys the Ukrainian land and people. This is the aspiration and the aim of the power elite, which has not actively sought to end the war, but has sought to prolong it through armed assistance. Ukraine would retain its independence if it did not join NATO and thus did not allow NATO nuclear weapons and other armaments on its soil. This crisis and war could easily be resolved, but the power elite does not want that. Russia's actions in Ukraine through the deaths of civilians are unacceptable. The world has now accepted Nazism by accepting the Azov Nazi regiment in Ukraine, which is an open supporter of Nazi ideology. It has been said of the Azov Nazi regiment that it has been purged of Nazi ideology, but this claim is not true, as the Azov regiment's website, YouTube channel and Twitter still display the Nazi symbol and emblem of the wolf angel. If the Azov regiment had been purged of Nazism, then it would not be displayed openly Nazi symbols such as the wolf angel and the black sun. However, the Azov regiment now prominently displays the symbols of the wolf angel and the black sun because the Azov regiment is a neo-Nazi organization that supports and advocates Nazism. The Azov Nazi regiment has been officially recognized by the Ukrainian administration as part of the Ukrainian army. If I understand it correctly, no other regime on earth today has given the Nazis official status in its own system, but Ukraine has done so. The Jews say that if a Jew allies himself with a Nazi for whatever reason it is unforgivable. It is absolutely certain that the God of the Bible does not approve of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, nor does the God of the Bible approve of Nazism, which is anti-Jewish, and furthermore, the Nazis have practiced the occult of evil throughout their existence, in which they have had contact with the spirit powers of evil. Because of the manipulation of the power elite, people no longer care that the Ukrainian regime has accepted a Nazi regiment with Nazi ideology under its administration. Many people do not know that in Ukraine the Jews have been attacked by Nazis since 2014. Nazism is an anti-Semitic organization, condemned by the God of the Bible, who gives no excuse for Supporting Nazism, not even the fact that Ukraine has been attacked, which is also against God's will. 
I do not in any way condone the Russian military strikes against Ukraine and I see the suffering of the Ukrainian people and pray for them. Propaganda is always involved in the war and both Russia and Ukraine are guilty of this. If someone claims that I support and approve of Russia's military actions, then they are either ignorant or they do not understand what they are hearing. I do not support Russian military action in Ukraine, not even though I raised the Ukrainian Nazi problem, which is common knowledge in the world, although there are many who do not know and understand it. The Bible teaches that the disciple of the Lord Jesus is every day on the battlefield of war against the spirit powers of evil, and we believers are not in a battle against flesh and blood. This means that a disciple of the Lord Jesus should not advocate war between people and countries, but to pray for peace, and to pray for a suffering people, who are experiencing the horrors of war. Ukraine is not a Nazi state. Nor are the Ukrainian people Nazis. But it is an unfortunate fact that the Ukrainian regime has officially accepted the Azov Nazi regiment as part of the Ukrainian army. There are other Nazi groups in Ukraine than the Azov Nazi regiment. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, is a Jew. And he is not a Nazi. But there is a bigger Nazi problem in Ukraine than is publicly known. On 16 December 2020, the UN General Assembly voted to reject the glorification of Nazism, neo-Nazism and other practices that fuel contemporary forms of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance. The UN General Assembly was attended by 193 countries. 130 countries voted yes. Which means they do not accept Nazism, neo-Nazism, racial discrimination and xenophobia. 51 countries abstained. 10 countries did not vote at all. 2 countries voted no. Which means they did not want to condemn Nazism neo-Nazism, racial discrimination and xenophobia, and these two countries were Ukraine and the United States of America. When you look at the list of countries that voted, there is a letter symbol in front of the country that tells you which country voted no. The letter N stands for no and the letter N appears in front of Ukraine and the United States. The U.S. has been training and arming the Nazis in Ukraine, which may be the reason why the U.S. did not want to condemn Nazism. At the U.N. General Assembly, the United States considers Russia to be its enemy, which is why it has strongly supported Ukraine in its war against Russia. Ukraine voted no at the U.N. General Assembly, meaning that it does not want to condemn Nazism neo-Nazism, racial discrimination and xenophobia. The problem of Nazism runs very deep. In the Ukrainian regime, the ordinary Ukrainian people are not a Nazi people. But the Ukrainian regime is really pro-Nazi. Because it did not condemn Nazism. At the UN General Assembly, not many people knew this. And it has not been openly reported. The Ukrainian regime has been given an upright image. But the evidence shows that it is indeed deeply pro-Nazi. The Israeli media have published articles claiming that neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine have attacked Jews. These attacks have taken place since 2013. If you want to believe in the Lord Jesus for the love of the truth, Then you will understand that the Ukrainian regime is guilty before God of anti-Semitism, which is an abominable crime and sin. In the eyes of God, Russia is also guilty of crimes and sin before God by invading Ukraine and killing civilians there. As children of God, we cannot support and condone anyone's sins. Before God, we must dare to tell the truth even if it is not popular and universally accepted. 
The world is rapidly entering an era of intense confrontation, with godless people taking sides, some against Russia, others against Ukraine and NATO and the United States. This confrontation may escalate into atrocities, which people will begin to commit when they choose sides to defend. A disciple of the Lord Jesus must not be at war and fight against his neighbors, for he must be on God's side, and God has called a disciple of the Lord Jesus to be a peacemaker, not to fight in war against his neighbors. The Lord Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for the forgiveness of sins, that man might have peace with God and man and eternal life.